Hi everyone, this video will cover gradient boosting hands-on from scratch. So let's get our imports in place. So we're getting matplotlib for our plotting, sklearn tree, which is we are importing our gradient either addition tree regressor, but we are not importing any gradient uh, boosting libraries or packages because this is going to be done from scratch. We're getting sklearn tree and then pandas numpy and the graph viz package which is very important for us to do our displays and RE is for a regular expression let's get the data imported so we have assembled a very simple regression data set so most of gradient boosting happens on a regression tree so that's something you guys need to know So for a regression tree your target which in this case is the number of stocks down column is gonna be a numerical column usually a continuous continuous column will be there and in this particular case, I have assembled a data set, which is for some form of a stock market scenario, where I've, I've given a few features, which is one is what is the economic condition of the country? Uh, how have the global markets performed? What is the support for uh, the market from the Rizzo banks? And then what sort of a sentiment is there? So those are the only four features we're going to depend on. And each of the features, I've purposefully kept them as categorical variables. Okay. Because when we have categorical variables, when we want to process them, we obviously have to encode. So that is an extra step we're going to go through in this video. And also I'll show you a little trick of how to, how to present these charts more interpretable, which is usually done in practice. Now that we've loaded the data with pd.readcsv, let's go in and, and quickly uh, set up our X and Y. So X is all the four features I just explained, economic condition, global market performance, RBI, which is the Reserve Bank, uh, metrics, and uh, the buyer sentiment. My Y is the number of stocks down, which is the percentage of stocks that are down on a particular day, which is what we are interested in predicting using these four features. Now, considering these values are all categorical, which means our X is all categorical, and intentionally in this case we have chosen that, we want to convert that to numerical numbers. But before we can convert that, what we need to do is we would assemble them all into one list. So for all the features we have, we are taking unique values and concatenating them into one large list. Which is what the list here is, total categorical values, so that I know all the categorical values in my entire data set across all the features is here in this list. This approach of doing will ensure your, your approach to encoding is a very generic code rather than a code that will go on a feature by feature basis okay so now that we have done that let us move on and convert these categorical values into numbers which we do using a label encoder obviously you can also do one hot encoding but for addition trees I would definitely recommend you use label encoder and you will see why I'm gonna use it and how we can read it back later on uh, for tree representations on charts so what we do is with preprocessing, which is sklearn's preprocessing, we have a class called label encoder. We're creating an instance of it, and we are fit. We are calling a fit function for all the categorical va values that we have in our data. Once we have done that, what we're going to do is we are going to be using that particular class, and then transforming each of the columns separately. So each column, Indian economic condition column, initially is transformed. And then whatever the output is, we are storing it into another separate data frame. In this case, I'm s storing it into X train data set. Okay? So that's how I've created my X train data set for all the four features. Thus, I've transformed all my four features from a categorical value into my numerical representation. And always remember to keep this class safe so that we can always revert back to the categorical values given this integer representation. So now let us quickly see what Xtrain is right now that we have built. Is Xtrain is a data frame with all the fe four features which we want to use for our addition trees, but obviously it has numerical values this time and not categorical values. So that's the main difference. Next, what we do is we want to quickly understand what are the numbers that are matched to which categorical value. So for that, we're going to visualize it. How do we visualize? I'm using the label encoder dot classes, which will give me my 
all the classes available within the label encoder and I have to call label encoder dot transform of those classes to get me my co encoded values okay so with that I have created another data frame here called mappings which is what I'm showing up here which will tell me what was the categorical value and what was the encoded number that this particular LE main which is label encoder has done the encoding for okay and this we are going to be using when we do the display of our addition tree now let's go on to the interesting portion which is doing the modeling first we have to create one addition tree regressor class which is what we have created here and I'm setting up a random seed one two three four in this case you can choose any other uh, number as your choice and using this will ensure your seed internally is actually having the same starting value and I'm also constraining the tree this time to say my maximum depth I'm accepting for the tree is only three okay so this can be another arbitrary value you can check out my YouTube video on uh, hyperparameter tuning to figure out how to figure out what is the right value for your hyperparameters like max depth then for the instance of the addition tree regressor you're gonna run a fit on the X train and Y train and you're gonna achieve a model okay so this is the very basic addition tree regression model that we have done so far so next step is we are gonna now start building our boosting model in this case gradient boosting model and for that we need two things number one is we have to define our loss function okay because this is a regression problem and the most comfortable mathematical function that we can always easily start off with is a mean squarer so I'm defining my loss to be the square error. I'm not taking mean square error but I'm defining it as half of square error where y is my actual value and y bar is my predicted value the whole square I'm taking in a half the reason half is taken is so that when we later on do derivative on this loss function we will actually have this 2 which is in the uh, power of the 2 will get cancelled which is why we do this so this is more for mathematical convenience we have used half so now another thing we need to obviously do is we have to calculate the derivative of our loss function okay how do we calculate the derivative of our loss function we are calculating the derivative with respect to our predicted value so del loss by del predicted value which is my y bar is nothing but derivative of this function that we have just defined by the del y bar which is my change in the predicted value so if you solve that all I've done is here is really simple calculus what you do get is y bar minus y so this is an important thing that we just need to keep in mind because this is what we're going to be using when we do gradient boosting remember in the gradient boosting math also I showed you how generic the overall algorithm is and in this case we are going to be plugging in this particular value in our algorithm okay another thing we will also mean to understand is how we're going to be updating the the final y bar which means every time an iteration is getting changed how are we going to how are we going to update but that you update using this formulation which is whatever the current predicted value will get changed by the current predicted value minus alpha times whatever that particular change in the loss okay so this alpha is called the learning rate so this is a very typical gradient descent equation so if you have studied gradient descent in the past there should be no confusion that this is a very typical gradient descent equation that you will be using to update your y values again when you solve this you're going to comfortably be ending up with y bar minus y as your answer okay which is what we're going to be plugging in into our equation or our algorithm next step now let us do this step by step for three iterations and then we'll write a for loop so what we are actually going to be doing is we are going to be creating a prediction for our training data using the simple addition tree regressor we just created with a depth of three okay so that we can get the values of errors that are propagated out of this model so this is the first model we created which is a simple addition tree regressor model which we saw here okay this model we have already fitted to X train and Y train now what we're doing is I'm using that same model to predict for my X train what are the values coming out 
and I am using y train minus the predicted value. This is this is the error for the current regression tree. Okay, so this will give me my errors, and I'm printing my errors and also my sum of errors. Okay, that's what I've done here. So if you see here, what do I get when I printed my errors? I got for each of my 14 rows, I got some error value, and also my total error was 0 0.77. Okay, so that's an important thing to note. Now that's the first step that we have taken. Now the second step is the critical step where we are actually going into the boosting process where we are now going to be taking that particular error so this is my variable errors are stored in the error I am now going to be building in to fit my new regression tree so I'm I'm creating a new instance of a addition tree regressor with different random state value or it could even be similar random state value but I'm using the same hyperparameter which is max step this three but this time when I'm fitting in this particular regressor t tree I am using the x train but as a target I'm using my errors so this is the key thing so here what we have really done is we have now made the errors from my previous tree as the target okay again we define that as our model tool and we are doing the same process as we did earlier which is using the model to, to predict my values for x train again we are doing an error calculation which is we are calculating the error for this tree by doing y minus y bar yeah remember y bar is this value this is where we got our y bar and and errors is the y value y bar is this predicted value therefore errors 2 is my second iterations error which is what I'm printing out here and also I put the total errors sum of total errors again I can see that the errors here are much smaller than the errors that we saw in the previous occasion and we can have that confirmed by looking at the total of that absolute value of the error which in the first iteration was 0.77 and my second iteration was 0.312 so almost half much less than the half okay so next I'm gonna do the same process again this is my third iteration what am I gonna do I'm declaring addition tree regressor I'm fitting it for my X train but this time I will pass my errors from the second iteration which is error 2 into this function I'm calling that my model 3 I'm predicting using that model 3 for X train and this time again this is my y bar I've got and what is my y my y is my error 2 what my y is my error 2 errors 2 variable and the y bar is my predicted values and again I calculate what is the errors coming from this iteration this is y minus y bar and thus I get some errors I'm printing those errors out and I'm making a, a sum on total to reconfirm that my errors really reduced. So compared to my previous iteration, again my errors are reduced. Very good. So now that we have done this manually, let us go on and do an iterative way to do this so that we can really run it for 10 different iterations, which is what I'm going to do now. What I've done here is I now have put a for loop so I'm starting off from the first iteration creating a new instance of regression tree fitting it with X and whatever my particular Y is going to be so the Y keeps changing meaning the Y keeps changing and getting assigned to new errors from my previous step okay only the first time the Y is the actual Y from our data frame from the next iteration the Y is always the set of errors from the previous iteration so we keep doing that in an iterative approach and that's how we build so in my case I'm doing it for 10 iterations and I'm also printing the tree so let's let me show you what, how the trees have come let's let's go down and take a look at this so my for loop has, has is going through and I'm also having one particular function called print my tree so in my print my tree what I'm doing is I'm actually using the graph with package to export the tree as a dot data file after I got it as a dot data file I'm actually 
getting the graph out by calling the source function which will give me in the PNG format okay whatever came out of in the PNG format I'm storing it in my output tooth and it's here so uh, let me see the second iteration maybe we'll first see the first iteration so this is my first iteration tree where it did a little bit of branching and these are my leaves what about my second iteration my second iteration is much different because this time it's looking at global market performance whereas the first iteration it was saying Indian economic condition okay so these are important points to observe that as each iteration can generate a separate and a different tree now let's come over here I want to show you guys one more little trick that we use to convert these integer values so if you see here how my trees are displayed they are saying Indian economic condition is less than or equal to 7.5 RBS support is less than or equal to 4.0 so these are numbers whereas we would like to have them more as categorical variables so what do we do is we have a trick we can uh, transform them into uh, categorical variables by directly writing or replacing these particular values into their respective categorical values in the dot file okay the dot file that is generated by graphwiz is a text file you can run a regular expression and substitute for such numbers because these numbers mean something to us we know it because we know it from our mapping table and we can have them replaced so that the entry will look more like this where it will say Indian economic condition is not equal to uncertain RBS support is not equal to normal or it could be equal to equal to normal it depends on how you have built the tree okay in this case bias sentiment is equal to equal to strong so you can achieve this by directly overriding the dot file but always remember if you're gonna do it do it on trees that you know not on random dynamic trees okay one more thing I wanted to show you guys which is the overall summary of having run all the iterations of how each of the iterations predictions were and that is this value so e this is the value for each of my rows across 10 different iterations so iteration 1 all the way till iteration 9 I've listed here so for each of the iteration I have got my predicted values and you can see how they are actually going converging more closer to 0 okay because so that's the first thing to see second thing also to observe is how my errors are behaving okay and for that you can take a look at the total errors that are coming out for each iteration so here uh, this is my f zeroth iteration this is my first iteration and this is my ninth iteration which is marked as eight so you can see how the total errors are reduced I showed you manually that the first iteration second iteration and the third iteration we saw that manually but then when you put it in a loop you will see that at the end of nine iterations, which I arbitrarily chose, your final boosted tree only has errors of this much. Okay? So that's the power of boosting er on errors, and that's the power of gradient boosting. That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful, do put in your comments and like the video.